Nasogastric tubes are inserted through the nose into the stomach for the purposes of gastric aspiration and decompression, enteral feeding, administration of medication. Enteral UK supplies two common types of nasogastric feeding tubes, short-term nasogastric tubes, long-term nasogastric tubes. The short-term nasogastric tubes. CareFeed infant feeding tube, a clear tube with a radiopaque stripe. CareFeed feeding and drainage tube, a white, fully radiopaque tube. Both CareFeed tubes are fully NPSA compliant, numbered every centimetre, international colour-coded tether to identify French gauge, include no guide wire, made of PVC, and can be used for a maximum of 7 to 10 days. Pack includes tube, fixation tape, and insertion record sticker. Long-term nasogastric tube, NutriCare. Features of NutriCare. Fully NPSA compliant, unique visitip, safety guide wire, fully radiopaque, numbered every centimetre, international colour-coded tether to identify French gauge size, made of polyurethane, used for up to 90 days. Pack includes tube with guide wire, fixation tape, initial placement safety card, initial placement safety sticker. Care feed feeding and drainage tubes and NutriCare tubes can be differentiated by the cap at the end of the tube. Care feed has a white cap, in comparison, NutriCare has got a guide wire and a purple cap. The advice within the video is in line with NPSA 2011 PSA 002. NG tube placement is a clean procedure. Follow local infection control guidelines. Equipment required. NPSA compliant nasogastric tube appropriate to purpose. Purple enteral syringe. PH indicator strips, which needs to be CE marked. Gallipot and receiver tray. Glass of water with drinking straw, if patient has a safe swallow and is not nil by mouth. Tissues. Fixation tape or AMT bridle. Water for flushing once gastric position has been confirmed. Tap water, cooled boiled water or sterile water, as per local policy. Non-sterile gloves and apron. Measuring tape for NEX measurement. In line with NPSA guidelines, 2011 fine-bore nasogastric tubes used for enteral feeding should be radio-opaque along their length and have external length markings. Clean work surface and prepare equipment at patient's bedside. Before placement, explain the procedure to the patient and assist him or her into a comfortable position, upright or semi-upright, supported by pillows, in bed or in a chair. Estimate the length of the nasogastric tube to be inserted by using the NEX measurement. NEX stands for nose, ear and siphy sternum. Measure with the measuring tape from the tip of the nose to the earlobe and down to the siphy sternum. Note the predetermined mark. Use this measurement as a guide only. Typically, an adult would be more than 50 centimetres. If possible, ask the patient to blow their nose and ask which side they prefer to have the tube placed. Check the nostril is clear and there are no anatomical obstructions. Hand a cup of water and straw to the patient and explain that they should swallow as the tube passes through their pharynx. Agree a signal for the patient to indicate a problem or that they would like to stop the procedure. If the patient is unable to swallow safely or is nil by mouth, suggest to mimic a swallow. Caution, as per NPSA, do not lubricate the inner lumen of the tube before placement has been confirmed. Insert the tube into the agreed nostril to the back of the nose along the nasopharynx. The patient's head should not be extended or flexed. Advance the tube gently to the predetermined length with each successive swallow. Where required to assist insertion, 
ask the patient to perform a chin tuck, tucking the chin down toward the chest. If any significant resistance is felt during the insertion, halt the procedure, withdraw the tube slightly, and gently readvance. If the patient is coughing, stop, pull the tube back slightly, and wait for coughing to settle. Before continuing, ask the patient to open their mouth to check the nasogastric tube has not coiled up at the back of the oral cavity. If the patient is unable to swallow or lacks capacity to follow instructions, gently advance the tube as the patient exhales. Never force the tube if resistance is felt. When the NG tube is placed to the estimated length, check correct placement by aspirating gastric fluid and determine pH of the aspirate using a pH paper that is CE marked for the determination of human gastric aspirate. NutriCare will allow aspiration with the guide wire still in position, attach an enteral syringe and aspirate very slowly. Check the aspirate for its pH value. Sometimes it may be easier to aspirate gastric contents if the guide wire is removed. Follow local policy as to the removal of the guide wire. The guide wire is not required to reposition the NG tube. The guide wire is not required for X-ray. Caution! Under no circumstances should the guide wire be reinserted into the tube whilst the tube remains in the patient. Carefully remove the guide wire. The guide wire is not required to confirm tube position using X-ray. NutriCare is fully radiopaque throughout its length and features an extra visible tip. When gastric position has been confirmed, secure the tube on the patient's nose or cheek. NutriCare has been designed to work with an AMT bridle. Flush the tube very slowly with water as per your local policy. The NutriCare pack includes a comprehensive record of insertion sticker. Fully document the procedure into the appropriate healthcare records. Documentation should include as a minimum the length and size and lot number of the tube used, insertion date and time, centimeter marking of tube at the nostril, who placed the tube, pH value of aspirate obtained. If x-ray requested, include how consent was obtained patient agreed indicated, fully document best interest decisions. Example of record sticker showing the minimum documentation requirements. NG tube care. The nose and tube should be checked and cleaned daily. If the nose appears sore or ulcerated, consider repassing the tube via the other nostril. Check NG position as per local policies and after any episodes of vomiting, retching or coughing spasm or unexplained respiratory symptoms. NG tube removal. Cap the tube. Position patient comfortable. Offer tissues. If tape is used, remove the tape. Ask the patient to hold their breath and pull the NG tube slowly and steadily out of the nose. If bridle is used, Cut one side of the umbilical tape between the nose and clip. Ask the patient to hold their breath and pull both the bridle and NG tube slow and steady out of the nose. Discard as per local policy. Document removal. On occasion, it may be difficult to obtain gastric aspirate on the first try. The following suggestions may help you. There may be no fluid in the stomach. There may not be enough gastric secretion in the stomach, which may be because the patient is nil by mouth. Ask or assist the patient to brush their teeth if possible, or perform mouth care to stimulate gastric secretion. Wait a few minutes and attempt to obtain gastric aspirate again. Tube may be above fluid level. Reposition the patient e.g. turn patient onto their side. This may allow the tip of the nasogastric tube to enter the gastric fluid pool. Retry to gain aspirate. 
tube may be in the small bowel. If the tube is placed into the small bowel, the pH will normally be 6 to 8 and bile will usually be present. Withdraw tube in small increments, testing the pH at each increment. 10 to 20 centimeters in adults, 1 to 2 centimeters in children. Tube may be in the esophagus. Advancing the tube can help reach gastric fluid present in the stomach. Advance in small increments, testing the pH at each increment. 10 to 20 centimeters in adults, 1 to 2 centimeters in children. Tube might be occluded in the mucosa or kinked. Using an oral enteral syringe, insufflate 10 to 20 ml of air in adults, 1 to 5 ml of air in children. This can help to move the tip of the tube and allow aspiration. It might be useful to wait 15 to 30 minutes and try aspirating the tube again. Gastric pH may be raised due to medication or continuous feed. If the patient has a safe swallow, elevated pH values might be addressed by asking the patient to have an acidic drink, for example orange juice. Aspiration can then be repeated. If possible, incorporate a break in feeding of at least 60 to 90 minutes, which may allow gastric pH values to decrease sufficiently. If pH is high due to medication, Adjust timing to ensure the longest period of time possible has lapsed between administration of medication and pH testing. For example, do check first thing in the morning before giving medication. If pH remain outside the levels appropriate for feeding or aspirate cannot be obtained, the patient should be referred for an x-ray to confirm correct position.